Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. Today's topic is going to be narcissistic relationship, the boundaries. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. So I'm under the big tree and this is a tree with falling fruit. So if something falls on me or around me, heads up. Guys, boundaries, what is a boundary? A boundary is a line that you do not cross. You're not supposed to cross it. Example, a boundary in the workplace is perhaps you have to punch in and punch out. Or a boundary in a school setting is you have to be on time for class. Things like that. In a relationship, we have boundaries also. Now, my hope is if you're in a healthy relationship, these boundaries are two-way, the reciprocal. They benefit you and they benefit the other person. And that is exactly what we want. We want to have healthy boundaries that benefit both parties. Now, in a narcissistic relationship, it's not like that. There are boundaries that you have none of, and I'll jump into that, and that the narcissist has as much as they want, as many boundaries as they want. Remember, in a narcissistic relationship, it is a relationship that benefits one person, which is not you. It benefits the narcissist. Now, when you met the narcissist or throughout the relationship, when you were in the relationship with them, I'm certain that in the beginning, you had no boundaries or, sm or low boundaries. And each and every day, these, these were being chipped away at insidiously by the narcissist. They were breaking your boundaries down. They were doing things when they said they wouldn't do things and they weren't doing things when they said they would do things. Examples, like I'll pick you up at four o'clock and we'll, we'll go to that doctor appointment. Were they picking you up at four o'clock? No. Did they pick you up at all sometimes? Probably not. Another one, um, I will be here and I'll, I'll text you when I arrive at the location. I mean, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'll text you when I get there. Did they text you? No. They broke a boundary. And conversely, if you went somewhere, you were supposed to check in with the narcissist. Remember, you were working on that hamster wheel, spinning around and around for the relationship and for the narcissist. You just didn't know it at the time. You knew something was wrong and you could sense that your boundaries were being diminished slowly. And that's exactly what the narcissist wanted. Remember, the narcissist manipulated you. They tricked you and trapped you into this relationship. Whatever it is, business, neighbor, friend, lover, whomever. They, they portrayed themselves as one individual and turned out to be somebody else. That's why many times the narcissist, they don't care about other people. They flat out just want to take, take, take. And when they're done, they want to take more. And they want to manipulate people. Remember, the narcissist is not accountable. They can't introspect and they have no boundaries. They have a short memory when it comes to boundaries, meaning they will, when they understand that perhaps they've done something that is not correct, they're just going to diminish it and say, oh, I was only joking or it's no big deal or can't you, can't you handle it or, you know, but you did this, this or this. They're not going to say, yeah, you're right. I actually, I broke a boundary and I, I want to replace that and I want to fix it and mend it and work and grow with you. No, they're not going to do that. They're just going to carry on with their poor behavior not only with you, but with other individuals also because that's how they live their lives. But boundaries are important. And post-narcissistic relationship, if you don't have boundaries yet, you need to be working on these, growing them, adhering to them, and, and enforcing them. Meaning, no longer should you be a people pleaser. No longer should you put other people in front of yourself. No longer should you tolerate poor behavior. These are boundaries. So if you find yourself in a position, a situation that, that is uncomfortable for you, you don't have to stay in that in that situa situation or environment much longer. You can remove yourself from it. That goes for anything, whether you're in a meeting or you're on a Zoom call or you're with some people in, in a group setting. If, if you're experiencing some toxic behavior, you can easily adhere to your boundary and remove yourself and politely say, hey, I have to go, guys. Sorry, I don't think this is working out or whatever you say. But that's a good thing because remember, when you're in the narcissistic relationship, you were stuck in the narcissistic fog and you were working for the narcissist. That's where they wanted you. The narcissist wanted to take away your resources, which again includes your money, your looks, your health, your social circle, your status, perhaps your job, your business, all these things. That's what the narcissist wanted. And that's what they're doing right now, wherever they are. They're extracting from other unsuspecting individuals who have no boundaries. So boundaries are an important part of life and you learned boundaries. My hope is when you were a child or younger in life, that you have to follow the rules. You have to do what, what is asked of you by society. That's called listening and paying attention to boundaries. In a relationship, it's the same thing. Let's say you're in a relationship, it's a friend, and this person is not reciprocating with you. In other words, again, they're calling you up and chewing up your time, and you're listening to them like you are a sounding board. 
and then when it's your time to vent and or communicate with them, they're nowhere to be found or they just don't flat out listen to you. They don't give you any input or feedback. That is not a healthy individual. That's not the kind of person you want because that person has no boundaries. In other words, you were expected to be there for them and you were. My hope is you're, you're not any longer and they are not there for you. They're nowhere to be found. It's the same thing with, with you're on an airplane, you're flying somewhere and you sit next to somebody and they are just nonstop talking to you or they're bumping the armrest and they're consuming all the armrest. They don't even care about your boundary. So what did you do in the past? M many times you would probably just maybe scrunch over a little bit more and just you know give them the space. Maybe that's what you still do. But my point is if this person's doing this, acknowledge and understand that they are not respecting your boundaries or your personal space. These are everywhere, same thing in the workplace. You have a job, you have, you have a task to get done and you have a deadline and you're working really hard and you're doing the best you can and then someone just comes right up and consumes your time about a project that has nothing to do with you and they're consuming your time and your energy and in the past maybe you were a people pleaser saying to yourself okay I'll give them some time they're down on their luck they need some advice some counsel but no I wouldn't be doing that any longer I would be putting yourself as the priority getting your job done and when your cup is full or you can contribute to that person's work you do so Unfortunately, that's the world we live in these days. Most people just want to take from you and most people do have hidden agendas and boundaries are a huge thing that people are losing sight of, specifically the narcissist, but many others also. Another example, you're walking down the street, you walk by that neighbor's house every day, you see them and they always say hi to you and as soon as you say hi to them, what do they do? They can't stop talking fast enough about anything, the weather, whatever it is to engage you in a conversation. And you do this for a period of time and then you realize, wow, this is actually taking up about 20 minutes of my day, seven days a week. That's what, almost two hours, two hours and 20 minutes. Multiply that by a month, that's over eight hours and so on and so on. So now what do you do? You continue to walk by the neighbor, politely say hello. Uh, I'm going on my walk, I'll talk to you later, whatever. But boundaries are everywhere, you need to have them. You need to have them now more than ever post-narcissistic relationship because most likely this is one of the reasons you stayed in the relationship so long because you didn't have boundaries and then narcissists knew this. Getting back to the narcissist, they knew that they could push you and they knew that they could crush your boundaries because they sensed early on in the relationship what kind of person you were. Perhaps you are an empath, perhaps you were a people pleaser, perhaps you were a yes person or you didn't have to say the magic word no, which is the strongest word in the English language. The narcissist, believe me, they did their reconnaissance on you, they did their homework on you and they sized up exactly what made you tick and if you did not have boundaries, you were grade A source of supply. Yes, you were. You were exactly what they were looking for, someone to manipulate, someone to extract resources from, someone to do their work for them. In other words, the unpaid helper. That's what you were in the narcissistic relationship. You were an individual who was always doing things for the narcissist, putting them way high up on the pedestal while lowering yourself. And the narcissist loved this. This is exactly how they found your replacement in any capacity. What it means is they knew that you would continue to put them in front of yourself and while they had you on hold working for them behind your back, they were getting other sources of supply because eventually your source of supply would either tire out, you would wise up, you would get discarded, or your resources would expire. One of those four things. And the narcissist, that's why they jump from person to person, business to business, town to town, country to country, always looking for unsuspecting individuals who don't have boundaries. And these are the kind of people that they look for. High quality, high value people with no boundaries. And that perhaps will just drop it, at the drop of a hat, will help other individuals. This is exactly what the narcissist wants. And this is exactly why when the relationship ends, if you were discarded, it ends with a thud, a crash, a bang. And you're left reeling, trying to put yourself back together because perhaps, example, you trusted this person and you put your respect and time and energy, love, effort, empathy into them. They took it all for granted. When your resources were extinguished or expired, meaning you had no more money, your health took a hit, etc., etc. They just left you up like a sheet of paper crumpled on the side of the freeway and they moved on to other sources of supply which they already had lined up. In other words, your replacement or replacements. So boundaries, if you don't have them, you need to get them. If you have them, you need to enforce them. If you're working on them, I strongly suggest you take this message to heart now more than ever. Because if you were in the narcissistic relationship, you know exactly what happened and how difficult it was and how it changed you forever. Building yourself back up post-narcissistic relationship is imperative and having boundaries that benefit you are the priority. That's why you come first, second, and third. No longer do you put other individuals ahead of yourself. 
You have to have boundaries. If not now, when? So guys, I really want you to get this message. The boundaries in the narcissistic relationship, for you, there were none. You were expected to be the, the, the caregiver, the person who pl planned the vacations, the trips, who paid the bills, etc., etc. And you were supposed to be there for the narcissist whenever they wanted your attention. At the same time, you were supposed to be placed on hold and waiting for the narcissist to call you or ring you or give you some attention. And the whole time you're doing that, you weren't living your life. You were just an extension of the narcissist. And they knew this. And they had captured you for a period of time. But you didn't have boundaries. You also didn't know how to escape the narcissistic fog and or the narcissistic abusive cycle. My hope is now you're out of it or you're getting out of it. You're understanding exactly what part you played in it and you're having boundaries and you're moving forward and you're growing, you're getting stronger each and every day. God bless you guys. Guys, that's it. That's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true, stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand you are the priority. Having boundaries is imperative. If not, now when? No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you. I love you and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye.